holy fetus that will be conceived in your womb will be the Son of God. Your cousin Elizabeth, who was called barren, is now with child. This is her sixth month. I am the Lord's maidservant. May it be unto me as he wills. I am going to be the mother of the Son of God. Will Joseph believe me? Will he understand? What will everyone think when they realize I am pregnant? I know. I will go stay with Elizabeth. Elizabeth! Mary, my child. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Who am I that the mother of my Lord should come to visit? For as soon as I heard your voice, my babe leaped in my womb for joy. My soul does indeed magnify God, and my spirit has rejoiced in God my Savior. After this, all generations will call me blessed, because he has done mighty things. He has exalted those of us who are of lowly origins. As he spoke to Father Abraham, he has remembered us in mercy. Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months. The time came for Elizabeth to give birth. Zacharias is certain it is going to be a boy. He says an angel told him so. Well, if it is a boy, I suppose his name will be Zacharias after his father. Here he comes now. Let's ask him. He said that the angel made him dumb because he didn't believe. What are you going to name the child? He wants a writing tablet. He says his name will be called John, as the angel commanded. But there's no one in the family by the name of John. It is indeed a boy. A very hairy boy. His name is John, according to the word of the Lord. He shall introduce the Messiah to our people Israel. <gasps> he speaks! After all these months, he speaks! Could it be that this is indeed the Elijah of prophecy? Meanwhile, Joseph discovered that Mary was pregnant, and he knew it was not his baby. Mother, I still cannot believe it. There have been no men around her. She has been in her family's presence every minute, and everyone knows what a pious girl Mary is. I certainly did not do it, but the facts are there. She is pregnant. Oh, Joseph, what are you going to do? I cannot marry her now, but I do not want to make a public issue of it. She could be stoned for adultery. Maybe we could just quietly break off the engagement. Whom did she say was the father? She says the father of the child is God, implanted in her womb by the Holy Spirit without any physical contact. Oh, has she lost her mind? She says the child is to be the savior of the world, the son of God. That is a blasphemous thing for a woman like that to say. I must put her away as quickly and quietly as possible. That evening, as Joseph was sleeping, an angel appeared unto him. Joseph, <gasps> thou son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for the child that is conceived in her is by the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you will call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. This is the fulfillment of the prophecy of Isaiah. A virgin will be with child and bring forth a son who will be called Emmanuel, which being interpreted 
is God with us. Mary, how will you ever forgive me for doubting you? I know. It is all so fantastic. Of all the women of Israel and of all the centuries, that God should choose me to bring the Messiah into the world. What will the baby be like? Since he is going to be God in the flesh, will he be talking when he is born? Will he already know how to read? Oh, Joseph, I don't know, but God knows. We will just have to wait and see. We are both of the lineage of David. And the prophets did say that the Messiah would be of David's seed. I just thought of something else. In the Garden of Eden, God promised that the seed of the woman would bruise the head of the seed of the serpent. I see now. This child will not be the seed of man, just the seed of the woman. God has had this plan since the beginning. Joseph and Mary lived in Nazareth of Galilee. But there was an old prophecy that said the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem of Judea. Micah 5.2 Very soon, Mary would be delivering her child in the wrong town. They were ignorant of the prophecy and had no reason to make the long trip to Bethlehem. Hear ye, hear ye, by official proclamation from Imperial Rome. Signed by Caesar himself, a census will be taken and all peoples of Israel will return to the town of their birth to register for taxation. Joseph, that means you will have to go to Bethlehem. You will be gone when the baby is born. The people would not understand if I were away. I will take you with me. Mary. I shouldn't have brought you on this journey. Maybe we should turn back. No, I must be with you when the baby is born. No one else understands. It took more than a week to make the nearly 100 mile journey. We must hurry if you can, I think it is time. I will see if we can get a room at the inn. Mary, I found a midwife who will help us. Was there no room in the inn? No, it was full. You did really well for your first baby. Pity he had to be born in a stable. Don't let that bother you. He will rule the world someday. Well, he looks like a normal baby. of angels. Don't be afraid, for God has sent me to tell you the good news for all men. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is the Jewish Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign unto you. You will find the baby wrapped in strips of cloth, and he will be lying in an animal feed bin. Can you believe it? Angels appearing unto us! Wait until I tell my wife! Did you hear what he said? The Messiah is born in Israel. I want to go see. A savior! Peace toward men! A baby? Let's go see him! Sorry to disturb you, but an angel invited us to come. The Messiah. Who would have thought God would a baby? The 
the time came for Mary and Joseph to present the newborn child to the priest and to offer the sacrifices prescribed by law. Joseph, this will be his first time to come to the temple, and no one here knows that Jesus is the Christ. And I don't think we should ever tell anyone. Wait till he grows up. Simeon was in the temple. There he is. We have waited so long. Who is it, Mary? I don't know. No one knows us here. Blessed art thou, O Lord our God. Now I can die in peace, for I have seen your salvation, just as you promised. You will be a light to the Gentiles as well as the glory of Israel. But how did you know? Hear me. This child will cause many in Israel to rise, and some to fall, and he shall be spoken against. Yes, and your own heart will be broken at what you see happening to him. Look, the Messiah, he has come to his temple. This is he of whom the prophet spoke. That is Anna. She has spent her life waiting for the Messiah. Young man, this child is the Christ the savior of the world. He will save Israel from their sins. From that point on, Anna spoke of him to all that looked for redemption. In the countries to the east of Israel, there were wise men who studied ancient writings and sought to know about God. They knew of the prophecy of a coming Messiah. In dreams and visions, God revealed to them that the Promised One was born. Then they discovered an unusual star that pointed to the nation of Israel. We have come far. This is a strange land to which we go. We have been traveling many weeks. The star keeps moving. We will follow it as far as we must. Israel had no king at the time because Rome ruled them. But the Roman appointed king of the Jews, Herod, reigned in Jerusalem. The wise men sought Herod to ask him about the newborn king. King Herod, there are three very wealthy looking wise men from the Far East. They say they are looking for the new king of Israel, a baby. A baby? A king? I am the king! Show them in, and bring the chief priests and scribes to me. You say you've come to see a baby king. How do you know of such things? We have seen his star in the east, and have come to worship him. Where is he? We do not know exactly. That is why we came to you. I have summoned the scholars. We will see what they know of this. Come with me to a private room. They say they've come to worship the King of the Jews, one who has prophesied to come and save the people. Do your writings say anything about a king? Yes, many prophets told of his coming. But we do not believe that such prophecies are to be taken literally. I care nothing for your learned opinions. Exactly what does the prophecy say? Well, the prophet Micah said that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem from the tribe of Judah. Listen, I would worship the king myself, so when you find him, bring word to me of his whereabouts. Of course, as soon as we find him, we will send word. Herod was fearful of a king being born, 
so he wanted to kill the young child when he found out where he was. It was something, the way those scribes knew exactly where the child would be born, but they were so indifferent to their own prophets. The writings of Israel's prophets are like no other. I have never seen such detailed predictions. Look, the same star we saw in the east. And yet it is not like any star we ever saw. It does not move with the rest of the stars, and it is so much brighter. Mark its position, and tomorrow we will follow it. There, it stands over that house. But this is not Bethlehem. It has been many weeks. Maybe they have moved. It is a strange star indeed. It must not be any higher than the clouds. It has been such a long journey, and we are almost there. We do not wish to disturb you, but we have traveled many weeks to see and worship the newborn king. How did you know? We read the holy writings of all people. Your prophets have predicted his coming, and then a star appeared to guide us here. It stands over your house, even now. With humility, we offer these small gifts in honor of the Savior of the world. He will turn many to righteousness. That night, God spoke to the wise men in a dream and told them not to tell Herod where they found the child, but to take another route back to their country. God also spoke to Joseph and told him to flee to Egypt, for Herod would seek to kill the child. Those men from the east tricked me! They took another route home. That means they found the child and were afraid to come back this way. Send my special squad to Bethlehem. Tell them to kill every male child under two years old. Many years before, the prophets had predicted this very sorrowful event to occur in Bethlehem. Joseph and Mary took baby Jesus to Egypt. The gifts of the wise men enabled them to travel and live for the two years they were there. After Herod died, when Jesus was two years old, God commanded them to go back to Israel. This, too, was in fulfillment of Bible prophecy. I called my son out of Egypt. When they returned from Egypt, an angel told Joseph to move into the little town of Nazareth. This, too, was a fulfillment of prophecy, which said that he would be called a Nazarene. Jesus worked with his stepfather, Joseph, in the carpentry shop. He grew in both body and spirit, becoming very wise. Are my five men going to work all day? Come in. When Jesus was 12 years old, Joseph took the family to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. They carried their lamb as an offering for their sins. Jesus, you can carry the lamb to the priests. They must approve it before the sacrifice tomorrow. We will find somewhere to camp for the night. Father, can I go with Jesus to see the temple? Several days later, after the sacrifice. Joseph, I can't find Jesus anywhere. No one has seen him all day. I think we must have left him in Jerusalem. But he knew we were leaving. I thought he would be with some of our relatives. We will just have to go back and find him. You all agree that Messiah will be David's son, for so say the prophets. You also agree that David called him Lord, 
as if Messiah were his God, then how could Messiah be David's son and his Lord at the same time? Unless... You must be careful with that line of reasoning. The conclusion could be blasphemy. Either the scriptures are true or they are not. Do we believe only that which fits our traditions? But you are assuming that your interpretations are correct. The elders are better qualified to understand these deep truths. Is truth ever deep? Was not the scripture given for our understanding? But you can't take everything literally. Our rabbis say... There he is. Jesus, we have looked everywhere for you. Why have you done this to us? He has been with us for two days. You have a most unusual son. Why did you look everywhere? Did you not know that I must be doing my father's business? I have never seen a young man who knew so much scripture. What did he mean he must be about his father's business? Was that not his father who was looking for him? Jesus returned with his parents and was subject unto them. He continued to work in the carpentry shop and to grow in wisdom and stature. Because he always walked in righteousness and sought the good of his fellow man, he was well liked by everyone. When other young men were falling into sin, Jesus was obeying all the commandments of God from his heart. You have always been more than fair, and there is not a better carpenter in Nazareth. I will take six more just like it. Remember that Elizabeth had given birth to a son six months before Mary. The angel told Zacharias to name him John and that he would prepare the hearts of the people for the coming of Messiah. This was also predicted 500 years earlier by several of the prophets. You must turn from your evil ways and obey God, for the kingdom of heaven is about to be instituted. If you will prepare your hearts to receive the Messiah, I will baptize you in water. But there is one coming after me who is preferred before me, for he existed before I did. He will baptize you not into water, but into the Holy Spirit of God himself. Turn from your sins before it is too late. What should we do, John? What does God require for us to be righteous? If you have two coats and meet a man who has none, give him one of your coats. If you have food and someone is hungry, then feed him. Seek justice for all men. John, what must we who work in the government do to please God? I am a tax collector, and Mabel here is my customs worker. Do not take bribes. Do not use your office to exact money from anyone. Be fair and just in all your dealings. I am not of your people or religion, but I too would like to please God. What should I do? Do not be violent with those over whom you rule, and do not steal or use your position to take money or property from anyone. Be content to live on your wages. He that comes after me is mightier than I am, and I am not worthy to untie his shoes. If you repent and believe, he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And if you reject him and continue in your sin, he will plunge you into the fires of eternal damnation. Stop your sinning now! Who are you that you come proclaiming the Messiah? What do you say of yourself? I am not the Messiah. Are you the prophet of whom Moses spoke? one who was to come and lead the people back to God? No. As the prophet Isaiah said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. 
prepare the way for the Messiah. And what right have you got to go around our religious authority and baptize these people? I am only a messenger, preparing the way for Messiah. But you are sons of snakes. You think that just because you are Jews and children of Abraham that you are children of God. You need to put away your sins of pride and arrogance. The axe is laid to the root of the trees, and you will be cut down and cast into the fires of damnation if you do not change your hearts. John, you say the Messiah is coming soon. How will you know when he comes? The angel of God told me that on whom I see the Spirit of God descending like a dove, he is the Messiah of Israel, the Savior of the world. John had been preaching six months, and Jesus was 30 years old. I knew this time would come. The angel Gabriel told me that I would experience great sorrow. I only wish your father, I mean your stepfather, were still alive to see this. What will you do? How will you start? Will you go to the temple? I do not know. My father will show me. First I must go see John and be baptized of him. He has prepared many for the day of regeneration. Will you come back to see me? Of course, mother. I will not forsake you. But you must be strong. Things will come upon me that will not be easy for you. Prepare for the coming of the Messiah. Your fathers must turn your hearts to your children. You must become wise and dedicate your time and energies to teaching them the laws of God. If your disobedient children see your sincerity, it will turn their hearts to their fathers and your families will be healed. If this is your heart and you are willing to follow the Messiah when he comes, then come down into the water and I will baptize you with the baptism of and when Messiah comes, he will forgive your sins. John, will you baptize me? It would be more appropriate if you would baptize me. You are indeed a righteous man. John, I must obey all the laws of God. I will do as my Father has commanded his people. I see the dove. You are the Messiah. I should have known. This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. This is he, the Lamb of God, who will take away the sins of the whole world. The Holy One of God. The Christ! He has come! He will set up the kingdom. Where is he going? Isn't he going to redeem the nation? In time. But first he must pass the test. What test? The one Adam and all his descendants have failed. He must meet the Prince of Darkness. The father told his son Jesus to fast for 40 days. He ate no food of any kind. As his body grew weaker, Satan tried to convince him to disobey his father and satisfy his hunger. The first man, Adam, disobeyed God and lost his privileged position. Jesus existed as God from eternity, but now he was a man of mortal flesh. Would he pass the test of temptation where all others had failed? At the end of 40 days of fasting, Jesus was hungry and weak. He now understood what it was like to be in poverty, to be hungry until your body begins to eat itself. He now understood what it was like to be alone, forsaken, sick, and weak. 
For many days, Satan attacked Jesus' mind with thoughts of doubt and fear. Knowing the temptation was nearly over and that Jesus was at his weakest point, Satan did something he rarely does. He made an appearance before Jesus. Since you are the Son of God, you have a right to eat. Satan tempted the first man, Adam, into eating something forbidden. He was now trying the same temptation on this weakened and hungry son of man. It was truly a temptation to a man who hadn't eaten in 40 days. Here, you can turn this stone into a loaf of bread and satisfy your hunger. No, I will not, for the scriptures say that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that God speaks. Come with me then, I will take you to a place where you can obey God. If you were to jump from here, and the angels were to come and catch you, the people would all see it, and they would receive you as Messiah. And I know that is why you came. You mentioned the scripture, and the scripture does say that the angels will bear you up in their hands and keep you from so much as striking your foot against a stone. Now is the time to show them your power. The scripture also says that you should not tempt the Lord your God. I know you love the world and came to save it. So I will show you something I think you will like. There now, from here we can see most of the world's leading kingdoms. Aren't they just absolutely glorious? Ever since Adam turned his back on your rule, I have owned this world. Then give it to me over and over again. It's all mine. I am the god of this world, not you. But I would give it all to you, on just one condition. If you will just kneel down this once and worship me, I will give up my control of the world, and you can have it, and everybody in it. What do you say? The scripture says you are to worship only Jehovah God and serve no one but Him. You have failed. Now get out of here! Satan fled from Christ's presence. For the first time in human history, Satan confronted a man whom he could not deceive. Jesus passed the test. The earth now had one human being that was in total submission to God. The 40-day trial was over, but Jesus was too weak to go on. Angels came with food and water and ministered unto him. When his body was strengthened, he returned to where John was preaching.